I started off 30 years ago, my first experience with ed tech. Um, I've been in many different realms of education over the years, and but at this one particular time, 30 plus years ago, I walked into my school's bookstore. And as I walked into it, in the middle of the bookstore was a huge display. I'm gonna have the um, slides come on up. And when I saw this display, um, I was curious. And I'm a curious person by nature, um, which has actually helped me in the past two years. Uh, curiosity has definitely helped. We'll talk about that a little more. But I was a curious person by nature. And so when I walked into the bookstore, I saw a Macintosh Apple computer. There you go. Um, and as I walked in, there was a rep there. And, you know, my parents had computers at home and not at home in their office at that time. And I knew about email because it was just starting to come about. But I really didn't know anybody that had a personal computer at home. And so I walk into the bookstore and I see this. And of course, there's a rep there. And so my first question was, how on earth is that going to help me be a better student? You know, we came to school in those days with typewriters is what we had. And so um, as the sales rep, you know, was telling me all about it, um, I took some time asking a lot of questions and I knew I needed one, you know, but I had a car and a car cost about as much as a computer. Which one do I have at the time? Well, what sold me was spell check. Believe it or not, I came from a background where I've been told I was dyslexic when I was first um, diagnosed, you know, way back in the day, as a young kid, I was told I would never graduate from high school. And my parents were worried. They sent me to reading specialists. I was tenacious. My parents were tenacious. We were able to work through it. I ended up going to college. But as I'm in college, I'm still struggling with some things. The technology wasn't there at that time. People didn't understand, you know, there was no IEPs, learning issues that people had processing issues. And so as I'm talking to the sales rep, that word spell check stood out to me. And I'm like, what? What is that? So long story short, I get a computer. I go home with it. It's Christmas break. I spend the whole Christmas just hidden in this thing. The world of a mouse was unbelievable for those of you that might remember with me. And the idea that not only I could do graphics, but I could also become a better student my world opened up. I didn't hide behind my computer. I still had to do the work, still had to do the research. I was in the library, but boy, did that technology help me out at that time. This um, was transformative for me. Technology has continued to help me be a better communicator. It has helped me collaborate with others and now come alongside students and our teachers and you guys to help us realize like, what's the next for our students to reimagine education, which is what we've been doing the past two years, right? Reimagining what is next. Helping our teachers not only to um, be able to do their job, to be better at their job, more proficient at their job. But the biggest thing that we're seeing over the past couple of years is how can we help our students become healthy digital citizens and innovators? Yet as educators, we have a problem. Technology is always changing. We talked about this with the apps. How do we know what's safe? We have network and connectivity issues. We have hardware that constantly needs updates that Jimmy was talking about. And then we have expectations with software and knowing what technology skills that we are to teach. What is important that our kids need to know? And it can get overwhelming and daunting when we still just want to teach math and reading and writing and, and keep the basics, the basics. So how do we keep our teachers up to date with technology and make integration seamless in a world where every day there is an update? Literally, like we wake up in the morning and we see this update. It's been mentioned in here in this room that our teachers are exhausted and I can attest to that. Um, we don't wanna throw something more at teachers. I, as a middle school teacher, am tired. It, there's a lot that's happened in the last couple of years. And we don't want some more stuff just piled on us. But it does start with coming alongside all of our schools, 
our teachers, our parents, to build a culture of curiosity. We're in an age where um, Charlie mentioned we're more guides on the sides than sages on the stage, right? That's a term that's been around since I was getting my master's in education. But we know that the guide means we're to engage in this curiosity. We're to take our students down the road of curiosity. As administrators, you're taking your teachers down the road of curiosity. There's a freedom in exploring and it's fun and it's exciting. That's why we became educators to begin with because learning was fun. As educators, we continue to be curious and we're modeling this curiosity with our students. This is the first step is to model this curiosity and to remember to keep the main thing, the main thing. We're guiding our students as we're, they're watching us and then we're gently nudging them towards this curiosity. All along asking the question, how can we help make the world a better place? That's part of us keeping the main thing, the main thing. What is it, why? What's the why behind technology? Why are we bringing this into our classrooms? Why are we using these apps? How is this helping our parents and our students and us continue this partnership? We can't do it without our parents. We can't do it without the students, without the teachers. It's us all coming together. So when we wake up in the morning, what questions are we asking? What are we as administrators, as leaders curious about? What are teachers, our families, our students curious about? Are we curious about a new technology, about the latest teaching philosophy, or maybe simply, I'm curious about how did my garden do last night, right? Keeping that curiosity alive. What are we curious, curious about in our own lives as well as in our professional life? We wanna encourage all of our educators to stay curious. I see curiosity as a muscle. The more that we're curious, the more we're building it and the less fearful we'll become. So when the pandemic hit, I was curious, what does this mean? How long, what's gonna happen? And how can we keep the main thing, the main thing? How can we keep education the main thing? How can I love my kids when they're on screen across from me? How can I love my parents when they're all fighting about politics, right? How can I do the next thing that needs to be done? It's that idea of being curious and that it's okay to be curious. This is about reimagining our education. We use technology to reimagine our learning. How can our students learn on the screen and off the screen? How can we teach being curious to our staff? First, we gotta make it safe to ask questions, right? Boy, was there a lot of fear when it first happened. And I gotta tell you, as an educator, when I'm in my own domain, in my own world, I know my classroom, right? I know my classroom, I know my curriculum, everything is safe inside that world. And then you throw in all these other things like a pandemic or like a new technology, that's gonna wear me down, that's exhausting. And then you throw in the parent emails with it. Oh, but if I could just stay focused on, okay, what am I curious about today? What am I curious about? What is gonna be the main thing? Which takes me right back to next. It's the golden rule. When we focus on the main thing that is the main thing, right? Um, how to treat others how we want to be treated. What does this have to do with technology? For years, we've taught our students to be kind in the classroom. You guys remember the poem of what I learned in kindergarten? You know, that still is very applicable to us today. It still holds true. Even though Meta has been, Meta, am I saying that right, has been introduced, right? And we've got crypto and NFTs and, and all this new world that our students are going to be a part of. If we're continuing to teach our teachers how to be curious and then to just continually be modeling and living into the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. At the same time, we have students who have massive technology in their hands when we are having that on our mouthpiece at all times, how are you treating your neighbor? How are you loving one another? How are you being kind to one another? Instead of just focusing on devices and the actual technology, we're keeping our teachers up to speed by just reminding them to breathe, to live into the golden rule, and to continue to be curious. We know that the best of humanity 
is when we pull together to care and love for one another. We teach students because we love and care for them. We feel called not only to help them learn to read, write, math, history, and science, but to treat others as you'd like to be treated. Studies are showing us that our children are engaged online and in social media too young and for too long. Having our teachers teach the golden rule through technology integration is going to help our students know more how to navigate the world of social media. Having our teachers teach the golden rule in online spaces is going to teach your teachers, is going to help keep your teachers up to date with technology. They'll naturally weave it into their curriculum when we as administrators and in a community are coming together saying this is how we do it. I don't know if you guys know of a app out there, and I guess there's a lot of apps, but there's one called Slack. And Slack was first started with a lot of businesses, and that's when I first heard about it in my husband's business. And then we actually developed a family Slack channel, um, but it's now being used in universities and schools. And what's beautiful about this is you can literally have, they're called channels, a channel on what are you curious about today? You can have a channel for teacher meetings. You can have a channel for what was the wow of today. And so you've got your staff that's now all integrating and working together in how do we treat one another? Because often emails can be short and snippy. Often we just got a problem child in our classroom and I need somebody to handle it. Or often there is a moment that um, maybe you had a question and it's just a quick question. The Slack channel is an opportunity to build community within your organization. And, and it's a way for us to continually be practicing, living into that golden rule of being caring for one another, caring for our staff, all along longer using technology. And it's actually fantastic. We have been using it at Rancho Christian, across the hill over there in Temecula. And um, it's really been transformative for the staff and the culture and the community. So this leads me right into digital citizenship. So digital citizenship, this has been a term that's been thrown around a lot, and I'm going to unpack exactly what that means. But part of our role in education today is teaching our students how to be good, wise, healthy, honest, lovely digital citizens. I continue to get asked all the time, what are all the facets of digital citizenship and digital literacy, and, and why is this important? You know, I'm watching you guys as administrators navigate this world of social media. You're seeing what happens, cyberbullying happens online, and then it comes into the classroom. And then you have parents calling you saying, um, wait a minute, this kid's bullying my kid online. And you're like, but it didn't happen in the classroom. What is it that we're to do? It's not happening on our school property. How do we navigate that? We need to be teaching digital citizenship at a young age, just like in kindergarten, when you learn to stand in line and you learn to say please and thank you. Those same ideas need to be taught in kindergarten in the online spaces. There's um, a speaker, and I believe he's the president of ISTE, Richard Collada. He's um, from ISTE, and he has this powerful idea. Digital citizenship is not a list of don'ts, but a list of do's. Digital citizen is not just about online safety. It's not about making sure students don't post inappropriate pictures or, or have their passwords protected. That's important and we need to teach that. Keeping students safe is very important. But digital citizenship is a person who develops the skills and knowledge to effectively use the internet and other digital technology especially in order to participate responsibly in social and civic activities. That's online and offline. Be responsible in their social and civic activities online. Every one of us are leaving a digital footprint. We, we can't do that, we can't run from it anymore. You know, um, at the beginning when we were first doing one-to-ones, parents were like, I do not want my child to be online. Children are going to be online. There is going to be online education. There are going to be, they're going to need to be equipped, right, for their jobs. They're going to be online. So instead of running from it, 
we're going to teach them how to be responsible in it. I call this turning the yuck into young, especially when I'm with elementary school educators, right? Their world is yucky out there. The kids see this yucky stuff out there, but we have the opportunity to educate and come alongside and make it really yummy, make it beautiful, be the light of the world in some really dark spaces. Some of you may have heard of a show called Ted Lasso. All right. Um, he puts a sign above his door before you go into the office that says believe. And I have thought about that, the scene that I actually first saw that so often with this sign. He wanted his team to believe that they could do it. Believe that they could become something that the world was seeing they could not. To believe in themselves, right? They were at the bottom, they weren't winning any games, and it's like just this visual, like believe. We as educators do desire for our students not only to believe in themselves, but to believe that our online world can become a better place. It can become a better place. That all of us together can make it a better place. We as educators have the ability to guide this next generation to being responsible, kind-hearted, and caring. We have the ability not only to live out the change we desire to see, but to be that change, to be the guide, on the side, leading them into curiosity in healthy, appropriate online spaces, leading them to be that light in the golden rule. We wanna teach the students in a positive frame, have students ask questions. How can I leave a healthy digital footprint in the world? We do this by collaborating with other teachers and professionals in this ed tech space. We have to collaborate. As a teacher, I've been so used to my own little world, but the world is so big out there and we wanna equip our students and our children to be in this world. So we've gotta be collaborating. Things like today, we've gotta to be doing with each other, with our teachers. Do you know that teachers in your school can become Google certified, Canva graphic creation experts, coding and data science instructors, even if they have no background in it, and more by collaborating with the experts and trainers in those fields. There's so much out there that we can be helping our teachers to grow into with confidence. Why teach coding starting in curriculum or without screens you can teach coding in pre-K? Because the coding language is going to be the language for this next generation. It is being used more than, than our, the, the Spanish and German and French and English. We need multiple languages in our pockets, not just the language of our primary country. And coding is significant. In fact, I was talking with a woman, she is a um, VP in one of the tech companies. And she was telling me that her assistants have to know certain coding languages. So the ability for our kids to be fully functioning the way they need it, the systems need to have some um, understanding of coding, then we need to be teaching that to our students. And, and it's not necessarily like, here's a computer science class, the AP class that you take, although that's important, right? But it's teaching that computational thinking, thinking as early as preschool, which is, Algorithmic, left, right, forward, backwards, problem solving is a lot of what this is. So we teach this because it's important that computational thinking practiced early helps students succeed. Digital citizenship is about curating a positive and effective digital footprint. We can support our teachers by giving them the tools to teach their students how to curate a positive and effective digital footprint. There's curriculums out there. There's PD out there for teachers to have fun learning. Teachers being curious alongside students being curious. Make your PD powerful by giving your teachers and staff the opportunity. We no longer need to be in a crisis management mode. We're coming out of it. Instead of the pandemic, right, we call it an epidemic. We don't have to have that fear of, oh my gosh, what's next? Because we're keeping the main thing the main thing. We know who's in charge. We know that it's about the golden rule. We know that it's about curiosity. And so let's make our PD effective so that our teachers are continually being confident and growing. Finally, 
We keep teachers up to speed with the ever-changing technology by us modeling it. The best part of humanity is when we come together to encourage, to care, to create, and help one another. Let's create solutions for the problems of the world. That's what we're doing with our students, right? We're teaching them to think, to create the solutions. I was in a, um, a robotics lab the other day, and the, the instructor there, she said, okay, students, we have a student in our class who doesn't have an arm. How are they going to reach that shelf up there? We're going to create something right now. You know, the idea of solving problems, real world problems that our kids have, that's what we get the joy and the privilege of doing. <clears throat> Creating solutions for problems of the world. We learn to use technology to make our world, our country, our state, our city, and our home more meaningful and better. We learn to use technology to gain respectfully online with people who are different from us. And boy, have we seen it. different thoughts, different ideas. Gosh, if we're the light of the world, the light of the world is in us, then let's be the light of the world in all these digital spaces as adults modeling this. Let's equip our teachers and teach our students how to curate this digital footprint through modeling PD, growing our curiosity, learning how to be healthy digital citizens who live out the golden rule. We can do this. We've seen it being done. And now we can take it to the next step and bringing us all together to say, okay, let's go. Ahead. My first step would be to just start with saying, okay, teachers, let's listen to you. What is it that you need knowing what we've learned in the past few years on how to create healthy digital citizens? 